So we're very pleased tonight to have with us Pedro Kahn and Julio Montaner, who will be addressing the issues around commitment and adherence and treatment as prevention. But before we begin that, we might say, what are the minimum standards, uh, Pedro, uh, that will come out of the conference on that? Well, you know, we are here in South Africa, and just nine years ago we had the Durban Conference in which we set the tone for starting uh, delivering antiretroviral therapy in this continent, and it was extremely successful, even we are far behind the needs. Nevertheless, uh, we, we have guidelines now from WHO. Uh, the, uh, the, those guidelines were, were put together in uh, 2006, calling for treatment in asymptomatic patients with 200 CD4s or, or less. Our expectations are that after the uh, amount of science that will be shown in this conference, the threshold of 350 that uh, has already been adopted by northern countries should also be universal. So we expect that WHO will update the, the guidelines and uh, every single human being in, in this world who uh, has 350 CD4 or less should immediately start treatment even being asymptomatic. And then beyond that, we'll probably need the leaders of the countries to be uh, to become solid solid with this from one country to the next. I mean, understand that I I know that there's a lot of the the leaders of the countries that can do uh, a lot of good to talk to other leaders and to benefit from each other's gains and 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 concerns. This is so, this, this is, is the leadership we need uh, certainly on our side. Yeah. You see, on that note, um, uh, we have a serious concern. The G8 meeting just happened in Italy in uh, L'Aquila and. Uh, and the, the elephant in the room there was HIV. Uh, there was no mention of HIV in the final releases of the, of the meeting, uh, indicating that uh, uh, with the excuse of the fiscal crisis, uh, people are pretending that they are distracted, uh, that there are priorities, without realizing uh, that HIV represents a huge challenge. But we are at a, at a, at a juncture when we have an opportunity to make a difference uh, on the lives of the people that are infected with HIV who need treatment, but in addition, in doing so, uh, because of our new understanding of the role of treatment as a synergistic tool for preventing new infections, we can, by doing the right thing among those that need treatment, uh, also have a collateral benefit in terms of treatment as prevention. Um, I, I need to caution people. Um, there, there, there is a second dialogue going on around, uh, around there, and we've been part of that as well, uh, where we are talking about the hypothetical of offering treatment upon diagnosis uh, to people uh, in an attempt uh, to, to maximizing the, pre the preventive benefit of antiretroviral therapy. Mm -hmm. But that's a, that's a, a utopical discussion at the moment. That's a, a theory, uh, it's a research issue. And, and because people dif don't, they fail to differentiate these two issues, oftentimes when we're talking about expanding treatment, like Pedro rightly recommends, uh, and then people say, oh, no, no, but uh, you know, the, the, the treatment as prevention thing is, is an experiment, and therefore we have to wait for all the data to be in. We don't need any more data. We know that people who are treated with uh, antiretroviral therapy become less infectious. Mm -hmm. It's in every document that you read. Uh, what we need is to do research to perfectly quantify the circumstances, the amount, the magnitude, but that's not relevant. The issue is that with Pedro's new guidelines, as he has described, mm -hmm. which has now been endorsed by major bodies around the world, including the National Aid Society USA and others, uh, they open the opportunity, they give us the opportunity, a unique opportunity, to offer treatment to more people that need it, because they need it, but also we will have a greater impact on prevention. And when you do that, the beauty of this is that the treatment, which is cost effective because it's, it's, it's good for the person infected with HIV that needs that treatment, so from being cost effective, because it has a magnifier, an amplifier arm at the prevention axis, mm -hmm. now treatment becomes cost averting, is saving you money. Mm -hmm. So the G8 leaders need to understand, the price, they, they don't know it, they don't understand it, nobody, they're not talking to the right people. So they need to understand that at a time of a fiscal crisis, what we have to do is the wiser, the smarter, the, the, the financially soundest investments. Mm -hmm. Antiretroviral therapy is a cost averting investment. So it's not just that saves lives, but it's actually saving money, money. And it's the only way that we're going to control the epidemic. So we need it and we need it now. The people who are, we know who some of the people are, they're infected. Many of those, like you say, are not on treatment. So they are out infecting <coughs> others with some, a known quantity. We know they, they're infectious. It's amazing that, you see, the, that the, we allow the, that. the problem is that uh, uh, 
bureaucrats, and for lack of a better word, uh, uh, they pretend that as long as you don't come forward for treatment, right, uh, my program is saving money. Mm -hmm. and, and this silo approach to healthcare uh, is, is vicious, uh, is, is regressive. Uh, we need to change that. We need to look at it as a comprehensive approach and realize that as bringing the treatment to the people, approaching people to the treatment, at the end of the day, they can take it or not, they, the decision is theirs. But there is a huge constituency out there that is not accessing treatment, not because they don't want, it's because they don't have the means, they are homeless, they are drug addict. They, they don't even know they are HIV infected, so we need to test more people mm -hmm. timely in order to offer treatment, as, as Julio says, and, 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 and uh, building on, on, on Julio's concept. You know, when, when, when economists uh, think about, uh, about health, they, they usually divide in two types of interventions. Interventions that, that are uh, for an individual benefit, for instance, the cardiac transplantation. If you, if you pay for a transplantation, this is very good for the patient and, uh, and his family, but this, this is not a public good. If you provide clean water, this is a public good because it, it serves uh, uh, the, the overall population. If you do a vaccination plan, it, it is the same. Now we are able to, to, to assume that uh, uh, providing antiretroviral therapy in, in a wide manner constitutes also a public good because you are saving patients to be uh, uh, individuals to, to get infected from people with, with, with high viral loads. Mm -hmm. you, you drop down the, the viral load, the individual, the individual is no longer infectious. Mm -hmm. So on top of the individual benefit and the cost saving for the individual, because this, this patient will not be hospitalized, will, will not need uh, expenses, uh, antibiotics, NMRs, mm -hmm. uh, CT scans, whatever it is, but on top of that, you are saving patients of uh, being infected. Mm -hmm. So they, they will remain healthy, productive for the, for the society because they are also marginal costs when, when you get sick. It's not only the cost for your bed at, at the hospital, it's not only the cost for the antibiotic. It's the money that, 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 that the society is losing because you are sick and you are you're no longer pro producing w with your work, mm -hmm. you know? Now, a lot of the patients today may be not coming into uh, be tested because they don't get anything after they're tested. I mean, they're basically going to sit and wait. Uh, if we have treatment as soon as they, we know they're infected, it may seem to me that they would be, there'd be a, a greater reason yeah, you, than you know, being tested. Uh, I think that what, what we need to do is educate people uh, uh, and to um, demystify HIV testing, to make people understand that uh, doing the test is important for their own knowledge and for the protection of others. Mm -hmm. So if I tested HIV positive, I know I had to be protecting myself because I'm susceptible to other things and I protect others uh, from, from HIV. And, and if I meet criteria for treatment, and in North America, as you know, uh, the new guidelines are a lot more liberal than just the 350 CD4s. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, we have now opened the door for people to be treated based on the new understanding of HIV as a chronic inflammatory disease mm -hmm. if they have co-infection with hepatitis B, co-infection with hepatitis C, uh, cardiovascular uh, uh, risk, uh, uh, if they have nephropathy, if they have pulmonary hypertension, or even, even in the guidelines we wrote that consideration should be given for treatment if they are in a serodiscordant couple. So, you know, there are many reasons why we're currently More than offering... 50, for instance. Of course. Mm -hmm. it, we're offering treatment to people for a variety of reasons. Um, and, 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 and the guidelines uh, really, look, when I explain to my fellows and my residents uh, what is the attitude of the, of the HIV treater today, it's no longer to find out whether or not uh, you need treatment. It's, it's, I really look at a person infected with HIV and I say, is there any reason why I shouldn't be treating this person? I mean, is it... Why? Why am I not treating you? Well, I mean, there may be reasons why. Now, if you have a person that has very low viral load, very high CD4s, uh, the, the inflammatory markers, the, the C-reactive protein and, and, and the likes uh, are, are, are normal, you could say, well, I'm going to wait a little. But you you're know young, what? you're a non-smoker, you're healthy, you're, yeah, you're exercised. Probably you can, you can delay. We are talking about uh, a disease that takes probably your whole life to be treated, okay? <coughs> We're talking about 50 years of treatment, and we and all this debate is about two years, three yeah, years, right. four years delay. Come on! Because doctors today are treating even earlier than the guidelines would suggest. Absolutely. Doctors that are knowledgeable. Guidelines follow yeah, practice, just, not the other way around.